What's up guys, I'm Ben and this is Kame Trick. And we're back finally with another car testing video. And today we are rocking the HR34 Skyline from WDT. And we're just gonna be bombing up my track, Battle Ridge. This is an original track that I designed and my buddy uh, Julian, aka Canadian, in the Kame Trick Discord server then brought to life so thank you very much to him for all of his hard work you'll also see another interesting thing in this video which is what i have come to find as the most affordable handbrake option for sim drifting it's uh, not the most realistic but using the space bar on your keyboard is surprisingly not bad and uh, the reason that i'm using mine is because during stream a couple weeks ago, mine unceremoniously broke. So, I am uh, in the process, ooh, almost died, of picking up a new one. Here, we'll roll the clip of uh, it breaking, because that was hilarious. You know, like I might have to do some pretty basic stuff. Oh, that's, oh, that's a bad sign. But, for the time being, we're just going to send it using a keyboard-based e-brake. And I gotta say, before I get into the car review, that actually works a lot better than I expected that it would. It takes a little bit of, uh, of getting used to, but if you just don't have anything and you're looking for a uh, solution, I kind of highly recommend it, I have to say. All right, now let's talk about the car. We are in the HR34 Skyline from WDT Street Pack, and I'm pretty excited about this pack as well as this car. This is a uh, update to the original WDT Street Pack. Update 1.1, so shout out to the team at World Drift Tour because they're always putting together awesome content, and uh, I was really excited to see this pack come out. It has a new uh, S14 as well as this Skyline Attitude Pack. Now I had to pick this car up in Millennium Green, and there were two reasons for that. One, so that I could pretend I was Godfoot from Initial D, <laughs> but the uh, real reason is actually because the color reminds me very heavily of one of my friends from Japanese Drift Team Spirant, which I'm sort of an honorary associate of, and uh, he had a 180SX that was kind of an olive, like, military drab. Uh, and it was a pretty rad car. You've probably seen it if you've been in the drifting for a while and if you were keeping up with the Japanese scene at all. I will post a, a couple of screenshots up so that you can see if you recognize the car. I think it might be in America now, but I don't know uh, who has it. He's got a Miata at this point, and he's also big into airsoft. I don't know if he's drifting as much as uh, he used to. We're going to take one of the alternate routes here on Battle Ridge. But yeah, I just, normally I'm a Bayside Blue guy for Skylines. If I ever had one, I'd probably have to do one of the blues. However, I, uh, this color just called out to me when I got ready to make the review video. And man, it is nice to be driving and doing just a pure driving edit. I enjoyed making the tutorial series, and if you found my channel through those, thank you very much. And welcome to Assetto Corsa Drift Mods. It is an excellent, excellent series. Uh, an excellent title that is, to enjoy playing. So, I hope to see you on the servers. But now that we've gone through all that, let's talk a little bit about the car. Using the stock... Oh my... Ooh, almost ran off the edge. Using the stock settings today, and it feels really nice to me. So, it's a big body car, I don't usually drive them. Um, I don't have anything against them, I've just never owned one, and I tend to like to drive what I have experience with. But I do find that I am frequently incorrectly estimating where the tail end of the car is on track. Okay, we're going to make it not quite. I'm going to say that sort of counts as a successful clearing of that turn. This car floats a little bit more in transition than I expect it to. It's not bad. But, uh, just a little bit. However, it feels very good to me. It's got a good flow. It sounds nice. I'm a big fan of the uh, RB engine series. 
yeah, it transitions really easily, and I, for the most part, like it. The most difficult things that I experience with it are just that uh, occasionally it continues to strafe around the turns more than I expect. So, uh, it's something that's easy to drive around, and it's not really a criticism of the car. I'm actually more just pointing out differences in how it handles versus how I prefer for a car to handle. But it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong. On the contrary, it, uh, it's probably pretty similar to this. And hopefully the next time I go to Evisu for real, I will try out a, uh, a big four-door car a little bit more. Gotta get one of those chasers. I mostly was in R32 Skyline the uh, last time that I was out there. I also didn't get to cut that many laps, so that's something that uh, is kind of half checked off my bucket list and half not. I still want to make another trip out. But it looks great, it sounds cool, you can enjoy going through all the different variants that my Battle Ridge track has to offer here, and if you haven't driven it, I hope that you'll check it out as well. But definitely, I am really enjoying this car. It feels great, and even at the stock 80% turbo, it's uh, it's got a great amount of power. The only issue that I sometimes have is a quick shift from second up to third. If you don't have your RPMs pretty well maxed out, then you will just about find yourself in a uh, a spot where the car bogs. Hey, what could this be? If you haven't seen my uh, track in its fullest, this is a little bit of drift car ski ball. Let's see what we can land here. Oh, I missed. No points today. We'll have to try that again in another lap. And uh, this is why you need teleport to pits. Since we are here on Battle Ridge, I will let you guys hang with me one more time and I will show you the short version, or the short track, which lets you get to the VIP parking area if you haven't found that yet. I can also talk a little bit about driving this track. Um, this is a track that is kind of like another way to express the principle behind my no e-brake challenge videos that I do from time to time, which I don't recommend trying a no e-brake challenge on this track. It's uh, very difficult. but. You don't have any runoff, so you can't make a whole lot of corrections. Two really hard parts of this track, one is right here where you have to come in too early and handbrake so that you avoid the risk of hitting the guardrail because that gets really tight. There's, again, there's no runoff even when there's a guardrail. You don't have room to, uh, to drive off the edge. And the other one we're actually going to end up skipping as I neutral bomb. But one way to get to the VIP area is to drop down here. around these little rocks on the lake. The main course is behind us, and if you time it right, you can actually, ah, oh, ran out of power. You can actually chase people who get a head start running the original course, and you can take this as a shortcut and pop out right up here and rejoin them on track if you want to hop in right there. But we're gonna continue up this last little hill and that takes us to what is known as the VIP area here. It's just another separate little parking area with a different jump. And I'm gonna send it on this jump, but if you wanted to, you could not send it, because of course you're gonna wipe when you do that. It's just fun. And that will connect you back down to the rest of the track. Another little fun point is the semi-truck, which is branded here, so you can check out Comment trick on all of your media channels of choice, everywhere your favorite social media content is sold. If you guys haven't made it out already, I hope to see you on the Comet Trick Friday Night Drift Sessions. They are 9 p.m. Central Time every Friday, and we always shred. We usually crash a friend's server. Recently, that's been a lot of stuff from the OTM crew, so shout out to OTM for the hosting support. Hope you guys have a good night. Peace.